Hey everyone, I am going to talk about measure tool and structuring your tree in such a way to speed things up. And I'm going to use a, another tool that was introduced a little while ago. They're called design groups. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, in a way that I don't think was necessarily expected. So uh, to all my friends over at Siemens, uh, please don't drop a piano on my head. Uh, love you guys. Anyway. Um, so what I do with uh, measures and analysis and anything, let's say post design, is I set up a design group at the end of my tree. Now you see I have several of them in here uh, for various reasons. I'm a huge fan of these. And uh, the reason why you see this design group with this little green dot is because this is my active group. These measures happened after this group. Now, if I'm working on large parts, this is a relatively small part. It's a little seat track bracket, not a big deal. But if I'm working on large parts, uh, as you know, updates take time. Okay, it doesn't matter the CAD system, how powerful your computer is, whatever. Updates take time. So I like to organize my tree in such a way where non-model updates, non-critical updates occur last and these design groups allow me to do that okay so for example sheet metal part the sheet metal part has a mid surface because you know it's important to see your mid surface your neutral element you have I have several measure bodies on here like this is the uh, surface area volume center of mass etc etc the density of the final solid okay so I have that in there I have an extracted face, and that extracted face is this outside face. The reason why that's in this measure set is because I did a flattening and forming on that. Okay, so the reason why I did the extraction is, is when I look at the final solid, it's a thicken, as you'd expect for a sheet metal part. And then I have a couple of corner breaks. Corner breaks in here, and then corner breaks here, here, and here. So I have to do that extraction to get an accurate representation of that outside surface to do the flattening with. So I can run nesting or I could do whatever it is I need to do with that. And then of course, I have a measurement on that. And that measurement is up here. And again, depending on the size of the part, how much data you have in here, you may have a lot more stuff in this measures design group that can slow down your updates. So again, I like to isolate these, put them in a measures group after the final solid, right? Put it in a tree, combine them all. And what this allows me to do is, you know, this is my um, current work feature. This is where I'm at, right? It's my current feature. And these are still there. They're still viable. They're still active, but this is my current feature because they're in design groups things work a little differently. Now, I'm gonna make a change. So I'll go to the driver set. I'm gonna go into drivers and I'm gonna show my elements. These drivers control all of my overall. So I'm gonna grab this and, whoops, grab the arrowhead. There we go. I can shrink it, I can make it bigger. I'll make it a little bit smaller, okay? Not that small, there we go. And note, because things are set up in design group, only things that update are the features in that specific design group. That's it. Now, if I came over to my final and I make that my active group, just click on it, you'll note that the solid updated, features updated, everything updates, all the construction elements update because everything is, is linked in such a way, but my measurements did not. Okay, the system didn't bother going through and updating that because it's in a design group at the very end. So by separating these things out using a design group like this, it allows you to make changes. You can go through a seriously big iterative change. Okay, maybe I gotta change the height. Yep, solid updated, but the elements inside of my measures design group have not yet. So my changes and anything that I want occurs much quicker. Okay. Let's double click on that guy, drag this out a bit.
So this is a way of parsing out that analysis data. It still needs to be there. I can finish my updates. I can do what I need to do. Again, if you're working on a big body and white panel, side panel, or you're working on a, a large uh, stamping, or you're working on a large injection molded part, all right, you need to know what the weight is, how much material, and et cetera, et cetera. And you put all those measures in here. Again, you don't want to update that every single time you make a change. It just slows things down. So once you're done, all you need to do is come down and either click on out of date, click on the measures design group, and you'll see it takes a moment, but now it updates. So a combination of all those moments that would have slowed down the updating process no longer affects that updating process. So if you have 5, 10, 15 parts in an assembly that you're working on, doing all sorts of stuff, you can set those parts up, get your inner part links, do your updates, working, this, that, and the other thing. And then the last thing you need to do is go in there and do your final updates for your measurements or whatever it is that you have set up and work away. So this is just a way to speed things up a little bit. Okay, so uh, the good people at Siemens went through the trouble of making your measures better, making that tool um, do an incredible amount of stuff and uh, you know they gave us these really powerful design groups may as well use them to your benefit okay and this is one of the ways I do that and I have some parts you know that there's a lot more stuff in that measures group so those parts take a lot longer to update so just just food for thought start thinking about how you may want to combine some of these tools to make your daily activities go faster okay it's just one of the things that I do. Anyway, I hope you learned something. I hope you like it. Um, if you have any questions, comments, please leave them below.